Hey, welcome back to ZK Master Tech. Today on this video, we're gonna be maybe doing a variety of things, but our main mission is we're gonna help Josh split his first 8370R tractor. Um, we're gonna be pulling the IVT transmission out of the tractor. Um, we're gonna be doing a hydro pip on it. So we're gonna be removing and replacing the hydro in the IVT. So that involves splitting the tractor, pulling the transmission, disassembling the transmission to replace that hydro and putting it back together. You guys have seen me do that before, but you know, this is gonna be Josh's first experience doing that. So it ought to be a good time. It's always fun to work with Josh here in the shop. Got an X9-1100 right here that I've been working on, trying to get ready to go. Been super busy, have been producing content lately because I've been uh, training, I've been teaching combine inspection class, I've been uh, trying to get these combines ready to go and I just haven't had time to fill a whole lot, film a whole lot. So. Um, we're going to cover a little bit of this IBT removal on this tractor. So we're going to be working on getting all the oils drained and everything so we can get this tractor split. Um, going through all the components that we have to take off in order to separate the engine from the transmission. So you guys will get to see that. And I'm not really sure where we're going to go from here. I know I got to go do a, uh, a combine inspection tomorrow out in the field. So I'll be gone, but he'll be continuing to work on the tractor. Um, tomorrow as well, so I won't be able to cover that, but uh, I'll try to mix in a variety of things on this next video. So let's get into it. All right, here's the 8370R. Got Josh and Patty working on it at the moment. So First thing Patrick is doing is he's got to get the washer tank out, got to get the batteries out so we can access um, some wiring on the side of that transmission. We need to get the uh, the rear flywheel shields off. We got to drain the engine coolant down because we're going to have to separate the heater hoses over there. Josh is recovering the air conditioning right now because we got to separate the air conditioning lines. So. You know, snap on AC machine, sitting here chooching along, sucking away. So we'll get the coolant drain down, the, the side shields off. Um, we're going to have to drain the MFWD down, the transmission down, and we're going to drain the rear axle of all the oils. So let's get that done. Coolant is draining. Patrick's pulling batteries out. See, now we can get into here because we got to get these all these solenoids unplugged. And I like to pull that solenoid out there because when we separate the transmission, if the transmission drops down, we don't break that little guy right there. So got the grounds pulled off transmission here. So also we need to get way down in that hole and take some connectors off there too. Josh is getting this exhaust pipe out of the way. He went ahead and got this shield off here. And while he was in the area, he decided to go ahead and we're going to take this exhaust pipe off here because we got to roll the engine forward. Of course, we got to undo the exhaust. Yeah, pry bar. Pry bar? Yeah. Little fella. We're going to drain the rear axle down here. Take out this drain plug. It's going to drain fast. Oh yeah. Yeah, it'll never be right. Yeah. Yep. Now we're gonna be draining the transmission. Okay. We're using an actual half inch square drive socket from Sun X. Going fancy. Uh, fancy. Fancy schmancy. Uh, there we go. I'm ready for pipage. Ready for pipage? Look out on the hose there. Alrighty. Pipage. Exhaust clamps. Exhaust pipe is out. We've got room for more activities in here. While we're waiting on the transmission to drain, I'm gonna go ahead and start ripping all this stuff off. So electrical here, alternator is gonna have to go get all these um, bolts out for the shields. 
Um, these steering lines are eventually going to have to come off too. These two green lines right here is what I'm talking about there. So I'm going to go ahead and get this all taken apart. All right. Josh lifted up the floor mat so we could take the bolts out to get this little guy off because that exposes our our CAN bus terminator for one. Ooh. And then we also have two AC lines that we're going to break right there. We're going to take that bolt out there. Um, I got this the step toolbox assembly out of the way so we can start, you know, digging into all this. Got the AC lines disconnected. Maybe all the other ones are stuck in the bottom. Josh is putting the little orange carrots in there. Everybody asks me where I get those. What is, they're actually got a John Deere number on? Yep. Flip it around. Well, the thing's oh, gone. Oh, the thing's yeah. gone. Hmm. But anyway, okay. Check. Amazon some, sells two them. more here. Oh. More plugage. More plugage. All right. While Josh is tearing into electrical on the left side of the transmission, I'm going to go ahead and get these input shaft bolts out here. You can tell we got a leak at the input shaft, and this dirt seal is, you know, no longer in position. So. We'll have to fix that later when we're working on the transmission, but it looks like this has been out before recently. That's nice. So this is the dampener here, so the torsional dampener in between the engine and the transmission. We're going to separate it here with these bolts right here and get those bolts out. Transmission is uncoupled from the dampener. So now yeah, we can get this belt out of here. She's stuck in the oh, it's stuck in the dirt? It's stuck in the dirt. Okay, well, we'll it's get that fine. later. It's fine. How you doing over there? Alternator's gone. Uh, wiring is uh, unwired. Things are missing? Things are missing. Oh, alternator. Wiring harness. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Yep. Got to get that little shieldy unplugged eventually. Okay. Or unplugged. Mm -hmm. Off. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Remove it. I can't talk. Anyway, now you're going to be working on those steering lines, but kind of makes a mess. Yes. Just FYI. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just disconnect from here. All right. Down. One there, one there, yep. Take that little, off. yep, that guy's got to come so that off. That guy got to go bye bye, that guy got to go bye bye. Just yep. connect them. That one stay since it's behind this point? Uh, no, that's got to, that yeah, take that okay. clamp off. Yep. Okay. All right, so before we make a mess right here with these steering lines, um, my thought process here is you want to, if you're going to start disconnecting hydraulic lines and making a mess, you kind of want to start from the bottom and work your way up. So I think now, instead of wallowing in the oil we make from taking those steering lines off, we need to get underneath and start disconnecting the lines and the dry shafts off the back of the transmission, work our way up to the steering lines and disconnecting the, the heater lines and the hydraulic lines for the, the cooler cooler lines going into the transmission, just so we ain't having to waller in the oil and having it drip down in our face. Um, so I wanna get all that done before we put the splitting stands under the tractor. So we'll have everything disconnected except the mounting bolts here and here before we get the splitting stands underneath it. So I think now um, is a good time to go underneath and kind of work from the bottom all the way up. Well, we got the shields off from underneath. There was one here and one here. And well, we got presents, Josh. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, yummy. So we got to dig out all of this dirt. Try not to get it on. Oh, that was a big chunk. 
So we'll be digging for the next five months. I think we got an acre of dirt in here. Yeah. Well, you're gonna look like a coal miner by the time you get this cleaned out. Yeah. That was a lot of dirt, Josh. A lot of dirt. Wonderful. Man, everything's just covered in yeah. So now that the acre of dirt is out of this hole, we can see the back of the transmission here. So we gotta get all these lines disconnected. We gotta get that uh, drive shaft there unbolted. Um, I'm gonna take the, the snap ring out here and hopefully uncouple this, slide this back. You don't have to. Um, you can actually pull the transmission off of this piece, but it, it, you kind of fight it. So this time I'm going to try sliding that coupler back. Um, got to peel off the wiring harness. It's down here. I got it disconnected here. We got to get all these hydraulic lines taken off. And that should be all the work that we do down here before we put the splitting stands on. All right, so we did get all the lines and the drive shafts disconnected from the back of the transmission. Got all the bolts out, got that separated, and I did take that snap ring off there and slid that coupler off. Um, if you don't take that coupler off, whenever you go to separate the transmission off the frame, if that shaft angle changes at all, it's really hard to get that unsplined. So I went ahead and did that. And then we got all the lines underneath removed, capped, and plugged. The only thing we got dripping is that drive shaft and I really can't plug that. So I think we got everything undone from under here. So anytime you remove these connectors, we label them so we can get them back where they go. But we need to get down under here. There's one line you always forget. It's right there, you can see it there. And that's for the, the park brake. So when you get that line undone and then all the hydraulics are disconnected behind the transmission. So now we can slowly work our way back up. All right, so we got all the wiring peeled out of here. Got the, uh, everything labeled, disconnected. Got, went ahead and pulled the, the park solenoid out the bottom there. Cause it will hit the frame if the transmission goes down along with this solenoid right there. The light's just too bright. Tone it down. There we go. Take that one out right there. So we got everything pretty much peeled off the back of the transmission. All right, well, we got a lot of stuff done today. We started at like 1230 and, you know, four and a half hours, we're basically ready for splitting stands and getting all those into place. But I'm gonna have to load up the truck because I gotta go do a combine inspection and go work on a 9RT tomorrow. Patrick and Josh is going to go work on a combine somewhere else tomorrow. So we're going to have to put a, a pin in this situation for now. But I want you guys to see this new tabletop I got made. Check this out. So shout out to Heartland Machine. It's in uh, Chesterville, Illinois. They do a lot of our machining work. We get a lot of hydraulic parts from those guys, but they do incredible work. I got this table for free from my sister. It's a pretty heavy duty wooden table, but I wanted to get a metal top made for it. So I measured it and sent it to the guys down at Heartland Machine and had them make me a, a top and they folded the sides, welded the corners. But then one of my best friends, Cody, water jetted my ZK Master Check emblem into it. It's pretty awesome. Turned out really good. I painted it John Deere green underneath to make her pop. But yeah, really nice tabletop. All right, and we're back. Yesterday I had to go do a combine inspection. I had to put a, a track pressure sensor on a 9RT. So I went and got that done. Now it's the next day. Um, now I think we're finally ready to get the splitting stands underneath this 8R. So let's get into that. All right, so we got the, the rear stand in place. So that's going to support the rear of the tractor and the, the cab. Whenever we roll the engine forward so got that on there and now we're gonna get the front stand on gotta get it off the pallet here but we gotta get this big stand 
underneath here and supported. It's getting a little wet outside. We've got a lake. My. All right, we got this stand slid into place here. It supports the front end right there. And then back here, it's got these legs that come up, a bolt to the engine here. Josh is trying to get the rest of the line bundle undone. So we can put this support bracket on here and we're actually gonna raise the air cleaner and this big support bracket and all this line bundle. And we're gonna lift it up off the transmission. So we got the jig in there. Josh, it's raining like a cow peeing on a flat rock outside. Oh, very much so. We had to shut the door, we're starting to drown. Yeah, we're gonna have to take the boat home. So that tool is lifting all of this up off the top of that transmission. And you're just gonna go high enough, Josh, where we can roll forward and not catch anywhere. Now we're disconnecting the drive shafts. Josh is using a half inch 12 point swivel, mid torque. We're gonna take those off both sides so we can roll this engine away. How you doing there, Josh? Wonderful. Drive shaft is unhooked. Now we're gonna manually relieve the ILS pressure. So that's the suspension. We're gonna take the, the pressure off these cylinders right here. Josh is gonna turn the manual valves. Should go in to the left. Okay. okay, so now we're, we got most of the bolts out for the, the engine. Got two more on each side. Oh, she pulled a little bit. Oh, she is peeing everywhere, but Oh yeah, grab a pan, jo or Brock. I had one. Slight leakage. Let's see if we can, will that stay there? Maybe. Right. Okay. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Okay, so I leave the bolts in place. So when we do separate it here and it comes off the dowels, if it drops down or comes up, I wanna know about it, I wanna catch it on the bolts. So then we can correct the adjustment on the stands to get this lined up correctly. Gonna do things. Yeah, it did. All right. See how the the top has a bigger gap than the bottom? Does that mean we need to go down on these posts here? So we need to raise the front a little bit. So take the that crescent wrench and raise those big nuts on the front a little bit. Going? No, not yet. Yeah, it's starting to come up. All right, I like that right there. Right there? I mean, yeah, we we can work with that. Okay. Well, that looks better. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and pull your bolts out. Uh, still, when we come off the dowels, it still might jump. So leave one in or take them No, out? take them out. Okay. Alright. Yeah? I'll roll forward just a little bit, try to get it off the dowel. Oh. 
không? Okay, so I, I took the air jack and I raised it up a little bit because our dowels in here weren't lined up with the hole. We needed to come down with the transmission a little. So you want to get this situation as straight as possible when you come apart. So it's a lot easier when you go back together and everything lines up. So we raised it up and then we turned in the wheels here a little bit to get it lower. And we got it pretty close. I think it's good enough. So we'll continue to roll this thing forward. There you go, forward, Josh. So we had these hoses unhooked from the transmission, but in order to clear the top of the transmission, that line's gonna have to come off. It takes a special tool. It's kind of like a fork that wedges in there. Kind of pry and wiggle. Come on, baby. She doesn't like you, Josh. No, it does not. Yeah, you'll get them eventually. <laughs> We're gonna go as far as that harness will let us go. Okay. Well, Mary, you're right. Well. Right. Ta-da. And there you go, we got the engine rolled away from the transmission so transmission is here so we'll be taking out these bolts next and putting a lifting fixture onto here pull the transmission off the frame of course there's your mfwd gears in there so that's what's turning the front end got the lifting fixture installed. Got one bolt left. Get on here. That's a bolt. Alright. Now we gotta try to figure out if we need up pressure or down pressure. Up a little bit. Whoa. Right. Back up, so you're gonna have to like turn that way a little, a little. Just so as you're backing up, it's going straight. Whoa.
Check it out. Well. Back up. Hold on, raise up. Tilt back. What? Tilt back. Well. Back up. Well, there's your first IVT transmission, Josh. Yeah. Hey, maybe now you can get that belt out of there. <laughs> Probably not. It gets a bunch of dirt wedged under there. Yeah. Hey, the oil yeah. loosened it up. Yum. All right. So now we're going to plug all the holes we can and take this thing around to the wash bay. I mean, probably just set it outside and it'd wash That's it right off. We would have done this 20 minutes ago when it was pouring. We'd have been all right. Yeah. So we'll get all of everything plugged up so we can wash it up real good before we put it on an engine stand. We got a big gaping hole through here now, Josh. Something's missing. Something's missing. <laughs> that didn't come off too bad. No. No, that, that went pretty well, actually. Yeah, it did. It, we just had to lift up on it just a little bit and then pull back and boom, it just popped right off the, the dowels there. It wasn't too bad. Yeah, I just breathed on it and it came off. So, very good. Forklift and boom did that just fine. And we, we didn't even have a whole lot of room for activities between this X9 1100 and in this tractor, but I knew we could walk it out, so sweet. It's time to go give this thing a bath. Man, look how much it rained. Oh, 
not much subs coming out. That's a lot better, Josh. Yeah, it does. It's like a brand new one. Put her back. Okay, stick, stick her back in. Up. We just took transmission out to wash it real good. Change the fluid in it. <laughs> All right. Well, we got the transmission on the, the engine stand, rotation stand here. She's, you know, 98% clean, I would say. Oh, yeah. But uh, way better than it was for sure. Way better. So now we can turn this thing over and start taking the covers off and pulling the guts out of her, doing the hydro. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. Um, I think we got more enough content in there for you guys. Stick around, hopefully I'll be able to video the actual repair of the transmission. And then maybe we'll do the, uh, the video of the install of the transmission. But you know, it's basically the reverse order of what you just seen, so. Um, I'll, I will try to get the repair done on there, but tomorrow I've got to go put a hydro motor in a combine and do some other things. So I'm not sure what Josh is going to do, if he's going to tear that thing apart or, or what, but until next time, keep that green iron moving.